Good morning, St. Matthews, on this Wednesday of the third Sun of the third week in Easter. I have good news to, for you this morning, an hallelujah moment. John Birch had surgery this morning. The tumor was removed completely from his bladder, and now he is recovering. They did want him to stay this, this, uh, this evening as I'm talking to you on Tuesday, and he will be home tomorrow morning, hopefully shortly after you view this morning prayer. So, hallelujah. Please continue to be in prayer for John. And now, let us focus our minds and guard our hearts as we enter into God's courts for prayer. Morning Prayer Rite 2 begins on page 77, page 77 in your books of common prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. And now turning the page over to page 80, 80, under the heading, The Enviatory and Psalter. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. On to the following page under the heading from Easter Day until the Ascension. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. And now turning the page and finding ourselves on page 83, let us recite together the Pascha Nostrum, Christ our Passover. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia. The psalm that is appointed for today, the Wednesday of the third week of Easter, that psalm is Psalm 38. Psalm 38. Let us read together Psalm 38 responsively by whole verse. By whole verse. Psalm 38, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, do not punish me in your wrath. For your arrows have already pierced me, and your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no soundness in my body because of my sin. For my inequities overwhelm me, like a heavy burden, they all much for me to bear. My wounds stink and fester by reason of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. I go out in mourning all day long. My loins are filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am utterly numb and crushed. I wail because of the wound of my heart. O oh Lord, you know all my desires, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding, my strength has failed me, and the brightness of my eyes is gone from me. My friends and companions draw, bra draw back from my affliction. My neighbors stand far afar off. Those who seek after my life lay stairs for me. 
Those who strive to hurt me speak of my ruin and plot treachery all day long. But I am like the deaf who do not hear, like those who are mute and do not open their mouth. I have become like one who does not hear, and from those of the defense. For in you, O Lord, have I fixed my hope. You will answer me, O Lord my God. For I said, do not let them rejoice at my expense, those who gloat over me when my foot slips. Truly, I am on the verge of falling, and my pain is always with me. I will confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those who are my enemies without cause are mighty, and many in number are those who wrongfully hate me. Those who repay evil for good slander me, because I follow the course that is right. O Lord, do not forsake me, be not far from me, O oh my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading that is assigned for this morning is from the book of Exodus chapter 19, verses 16 through 25. Exodus 19, 16 through 25. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning, as well as a thick cloud on the mountain, and a blast of a trumpet so loud that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. They took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. The smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln, while the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses would speak and God would answer him in thunder. When the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people not to break through to the Lord to look. Otherwise, many of them will perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves, or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, The people are not permitted to come up to Mount Sinai, for you yourself warned us, saying, Set limits around the mountain and keep it holy. The Lord said to him, Go down and come up, bringing Aaron with you. But do not let either the priests or the people break through to come up to the Lord. Otherwise, he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. Here ends the Old Testament reading. The canticle in response to our Old Testament reading is Canticle 11, and that is found on page 87, 8, 7 in your books of common prayer. Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah, Sergei Illuminare. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your wall salvation and all your portals praise. The Lord will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your glory will be 
your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The New Testament epistle assigned for this morning is from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is first born from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which he has proclaimed to every creature under heaven, I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. Here ends the gospel reading. The New Testament reading, pardon me. And now the response to our New Testament reading is Canticle 16, and that is found on page 92 in your Books of Common Prayer. Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah, Benedictus Dominus Deus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now remaining standing, the reading from the gospel according to Matthew assigned for today is chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. The gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, 13 through 17. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly 
The heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Here ends the Gospel reading. And now, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostolic Creed that is found on page 96, 96 in your books of common prayer. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On to the next page. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Suffrages A, continue below the Lord's Prayer. Suffrages A, page 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The calling for today is the colic from the third Sunday in Easter. O God, whose blessed Son made Himself known to His disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold Him in all His redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, on to page 100... A collect for grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now a prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite your prayers your petitions, your thanksgivings, your intercessions at this time. We pray for John Birch. We pray for Ash Voisine. Pray for Angie Hallman. We pray for Eileen Lewis. We pray for Bartikawa Wissa. We remember our president, Donald, our governor, Kay, our mayor, Paul. We pray for our presiding bishop, Michael. We pray for our diocesan bishop, Key, for our bishop-elect, Glenda, 
and for Father Steve and for Father Sam. Now let us offer together the general thanksgiving that is found on page 101. 101. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of hope and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, St. Matthews, take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you back here tomorrow morning for prayer. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to Him from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.